It's that time again. Welcome to another episode of Tech Force, your one-stop shop for all things in the tech world. Every day that passes, we get one step closer to us all having our own droid, who will be responsible for all the cleaning, cooking, and other domestic tasks. I can't wait until the day I have my very own butler droid that greets me in the morning with a lovely fresh cup of coffee. Good morning, sir. Here is your cappuccino. <laughs> the first steps towards that day is the robot vacuum that has become very popular in most homes. Today, we'll be putting the LaFont M210 through its paces. Let's get into the box and see what we have. First, we have the vacuum. I like how compact it is. That's the first thing you notice. It'll definitely get under couches and coffee tables. We get a remote control with batteries, a charging dock, and a cable for the dock. There's also a handy little cleaning tool for the vacuum. And then there are four brushes. Two need to be attached to the vacuum itself. And then we've got another two as spares. We also get a spare filter. And then here we have all the regular paperwork. On to its features, it's completely independent when it comes to charging, and when its batteries start to run down, it goes for a little charge and then gets right back to work. I like the size of its 500ml bin that is very accessible, so emptying it out is a breeze. Another cool feature is that it is packed with anti-drop technology that kicks in when it gets to the edge of a staircase or a sudden drop-off. This is both useful and works perfectly. It also has the very standard feature found on all the robot vacuums that I've reviewed, that it comes with anti-collision sensors, something that should probably be installed on all cars. It senses its surroundings and then slows down so that the impact is just a light tap. Imagine if every car accident was just a fender bender. It has five cleaning modes. The first is smart mode, where the vacuum basically just does its own thing. I'm not sure how it works, but I think it's just running an algorithm that's been pre-installed. Next up is random mode, where it goes off in a completely random directions. I just don't see how this would be of any use, but I suppose it wasn't difficult to program in, so who knows, maybe you can find a use for it. Next up we have wall follow. Now with this one, it quickly goes about cleaning all the edges. This is the first time I've encountered this feature and I don't think it's very useful. What about the rest of the room? Then we have spiral mode, also known as spot cleaning. Basically, the vacuum starts cleaning in an outward spiral, and this allows a certain spot to be thoroughly cleaned. I like this feature because it has real-world applications. The last mode is manual mode. You can remotely control where the vacuum goes by using the app. This works well, and I think it can be very useful. It works better than the manual mode that one gets with the Eufy vacuum, only because it is way more responsive and easier to drive the robot around. Check out the link below if you're interested in getting the Eufy. Manual mode could also be improved if it operated a little bit more like a remote control car. I think that would work way better and would certainly be a way to get the kids playing whilst cleaning the house. Then using the app, you also have the ability to send the vacuum to its charging dock, but the dock must be placed away from objects because it sends out an infrared signal that can't travel through walls or objects in its path. So placing the dock in a room where the signal can travel far would be ideal. Then you can also set schedules for the vacuum, just like you can with most other mid-range robot vacs. With this vacuum, you also get a remote, but there's no guide to explain how to set this remote up. So it was quite confusing and I didn't bother with it because I thought it would be pointless when the app is a lot easier to interact with and follow. Let's move on to the Levant app. Although the app provides control of all the features we've spoken about, it isn't perfect. The user interface could certainly be designed a whole lot better. For example, the Eufy app is much more elegant and easy to interact with and follow. So if some changes were to be made to the app, this vacuum would be a whole lot better. But everything still works as indicated. I wouldn't say the interface is a huge issue, but improvements can certainly be made here. Now on to its main and really only job. How well does it clean? It's very good at cleaning hard floors, such as tiled or wooden floors. It works on carpets, 
but doesn't give a thorough deep clean like handheld vacuums do. This is probably because it can't exert any downward pressure the way a handheld vacuum would. I would say the Eufy Robot vacuums are more thorough and better at cleaning than this vacuum. But this vacuum is certainly far easier for us to clean because the Eufy Robot vacuums use roller brushes to take the dirt whereas this vacuum has a brushless suction port making it so much easier to clean. But this is also the reason why the vacuum can't pick up dirt which is lodged deep in a carpet. So this vacuum is certainly recommended for hard floors as it is just as good as all the other robot vacuums when it comes to cleaning hard floors. But then its biggest downfall is cleaning carpets with only 1800 PA which is quite weak compared to other vacuums providing at least 2000 PA. So it's certainly not as powerful but I would say that's fine to use only on hard floors but definitely not for carpets. It is a lot more compact than other vacuums so it can get into tighter spaces but it is also round in shape which means it can't perfectly access corners. Even though it does have these two little side brushes this doesn't mean that it can access the corners. However, most vacuums are round so it's not a huge deal and I suppose the round shape can make it easier for the vacuum to turn and move as it's the same width in all diagonals. So if you think about it, this shape makes sense and changing the shape to a square would require far more complicated programming for the developers because when the vacuum is in a corner it will have to move itself away from the corner in order to turn. Sounds like the programmers and engineers have a few challenges to overcome here. Let's wrap up now with our final thoughts. Comparing the vacuum to something like the Eufy G30 Edge, which we previously reviewed on this channel, I would say it has certain advantages over the G30 Edge. The two main being the side brushes that the G30 Edge only has a single brush. This allows the Levant M210 to pick up dirt a bit better and direct more dirt to the suction segment of the vacuum. Then it also has a brushless suction port compared to a roller brush on the G30 Edge, which does tend to get tangled with lots of hair and can be a real nuisance to clean. But the Levant doesn't have a brush, so if you have a pet who sheds lots of hairs, then this vacuum is certainly so much better as you don't get all that hair tangled on the roller and all these hairs can easily be sucked up. But I would only recommend it if you had hard floors. If you have carpets, then it's not powerful enough to thoroughly clean for my liking. It costs around 200 pounds, which is cheaper than most robot vacs out there. It's on the lower end of the mid-range sector for robot vacuums. If you're looking for a more powerful carpet cleaning vacuum, then I would say definitely try one of the newer Eufy robot vacuums costing around 300 pounds. They are a lot better at cleaning and they aren't too expensive and definitely worth the price. But the Levant M210 is perfect for hard floors and cleans hard floors just as good as any other robot vacuums out there. Thank you for tuning in. If you like where robotics is going, then go on, give this video a like. And if not, let us know why in the comments below. Until next time, you have a great day. Now, how do I get this Levant M210 to bring me a cappuccino?